guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, hi, my name is Katie Wismer. I'm an author and an editor. I have 10 books out currently. All my stuff is linked down below. Today, we're gonna do kind of an annual video. I think I've done it for the last couple of years now, which is checking in on the goals that I set a year ago to see if things went according to plan, to see if kind of my priorities changed. I also compiled a list of everything that happened in 2023 that was like super notable and things I wanted to chat with you guys about, kind of like a year in review. I'll have the full video linked down below if you wanna go see it. But yeah, like I said, I've done this in years past, so if you are curious to see how previous years turned out, those will be down below as well. And before we jump into the goals, thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Ana Luisa is a jewelry company that I've worked with a few times in the past, and if you've been a frequent watcher of my channel, the majority of the jewelry that you've seen me wear is probably from them, especially when it comes to earrings and rings. Those are some of my favorites of theirs. This necklace that I'm wearing today is from them both of these earrings and my rings. You can't really see this guy's little snake. Very on brand for the marionette series. I've gifted several people things from them before. I just think they're a really great option if you're looking for a high quality but more affordable jewelry brand. Their designs start at just $39 and they have such a wide range of styles. There's definitely something for everyone. And if you're in the US, you get free and fast shipping. They offer free shipping with exchanges, so it's super easy, which is so helpful when you're buying something online. It's really hard to tell the size of things if you're gonna like it. They also have a worry-free guarantee, so you automatically have a two-year warranty on any of your pieces from them. If there are any pieces that you've seen on me that you wanna know the specific name of because you're interested in, feel free to let me know. Their mood ring is one of my favorites. And right now I'm really loving these ones I have in my second hold, like three stars. If you're interested in checking them out, make sure to use my link down below in the description and my code, Kate's Book Date 20 will get you 20% off. Also in the past when I worked with them, I remember them mostly having gold jewelry and the last couple of times that I've checked their website, they've added so much more silver. So if you're a silver girly, they've got way more stuff for you now than they used to. Or if you're into gold, like me, they've always had a ton of that kind of stuff. If you need any recommendations, feel free to let me know. I have a ton of their stuff and I'm a huge fan. Make sure to check them out if you're interested and without further ado, let's get into the rest of the video. I have not watched this video since it was posted. I have literally no idea what I'm going to say. So I'm curious. Um, I have a feeling I have a feeling things didn't go the way I thought they would. We'll see, we'll see. This coming year, I really want my focus to be on my health. The year before, in 2021, was really about my career and it was about the books and it was about growing my career. And this year was more about having fun and <laughs> experiencing life and getting to travel and meet new people and go new places. And that was really, really fun. But this year, I just really wanna focus on my health, both physically, mentally, spiritually, all of the stuff. So I don't really know what word I want for that. I think just health is boring. I don't know, maybe like vitality? I want it to be like a whole well-rounded year where I take care of myself in all capacities, basically. And have that as my first priority and then let all of my other goals come after that, basically. I don't know exactly which word I wanna to use to describe that. Wellness, maybe. With that said though, the goals that I tend to share on here are more career focused because I think that's what you guys like to see because we're always talking about books and publishing over here. Okay, before we get into the specific goals and stuff, I forgot that I do that. <laughs> good good reminder, I need to pick a word for uh, 2024. So my word for 2023 apparently was wellness. Even though I wasn't like really paying attention to this throughout the year, I actually think I did a really good job with this. It looked differently than I think she at this time kind of pictured what wellness was going to look like but that did end up being a really big focus for me this year and i think i did a good job of that we'll talk more on that i think at the end because i think less people are interested in that and people are more interested in the career stuff that we're about to get into i don't know what happened but the video and the audio in the screen record of the video i was reacting to got completely messed up i think mercury is in retrograde we'll blame it on that or whatever and this is over an hour of footage so we're just gonna deal with it. I'm just syncing it up where the audio is what you need to hear. I'm sorry that what's happening on the screen. I don't know what happened. Starting off with the beginning of the year, I'm gonna be publishing my ninth book. That sounds really weird. Uh, Broken Perfect Lies, which is a romantic suspense standalone. It's a bodyguard romance. It's spicy and it has Hannah Montana vibes. I'm very much looking forward to it. It's. I know this video was only a year ago. I can't get over like 
I feel like I seem so young in this video. Like, I look so young. <laughs> Coming out, I believe the release date I've settled on is February 20th. I've been working on this book since January of 2021 is when I wrote the rough draft. So I am very excited to have this one out in the world. It got put on the back burner with a lot of other projects, just kind of had to be on pause and had to wait for its turn for quite a while. So I am excited for it to come out. And yeah, it's been a while since I've released a contemporary book, um, since I've been so focused on my marionette series, which are all urban fantasy, paranormal kind of stuff. The last time I published contemporary was in March of 2021. So it's been, almost a full two years now. It'll be a full two again, probably at least. The Compare for Thighs did come out, I think around when I said it did. To be honest, that doesn't even feel like that happened this year. Like that feels so long ago. I forget that that came out this year all the time. And that book, even though I spent so long on it, like probably longer than any other book because it kept getting put on pause, I was working on and off on it for years. I will read through it and it feels like someone else wrote it. I'm like, I don't know. It's. A, I don't have that feeling with any of my other books. That one I pick up and it's like, I just like channeled something to write it all down. And it's just like, someone else wrote it. It's very bizarre. It's also one of my favorite books I've ever published though. So I'm very proud of it. And I'm very happy that it finally came out after years of stop and start working on it. On the publication front, we have Marionette's book four, Ruthless Ends coming out September 22nd pushback month it'll be book four so it's gonna be an interesting writing experience um i don't know i'm not very stressed about it though i'm looking forward to it i don't have as clear of a picture for this book as i did for book three but i'm not stressed about that i'm more kind of like excited to see where the ideas that i do have for this book take me and we'll see that makes it sound like i don't know what's gonna happen in this book i do but things along the way always surprise me she had no idea that book nearly killed me literally she had no idea um that book was both the best and the worst experience i've ever had writing it almost killed me <laughs> literally that book made me question if i wanted to keep writing if i wanted to be an author anymore um it made me doubt myself and question myself more than anything else it was the hardest thing i have ever written in my life the hardest thing i've ever accomplished in my life so the other side of the coin is once it was finally done it was the most like rewarding and satisfying experience because i pushed through something that was that much of a struggle and now i'm very happy with the end product but um i'm not worried that book gave me hell all year long when i look back on this year i will remember struggling with this book the entire fucking year which is why it ended up coming out later than expected it's done it's here it's out now it's big and i finished a series this is my first series ending book i've ever written it was a new it was a very very new experience i learned a lot don't think i'm gonna be writing another series anytime soon after that one i want a completed draft of gracie's book done before the end of this year Good god i think i have said this in every goals video for the past like several years and it never fucking happens. Gracie's book is something I started writing the summer of 2021. It's a contemporary romance. I did work on it this year. It's still not a completed draft. But I think I have about 35K. It's not done. I think I started that in 2021 too, and it just got pushed on the back burner. I think I have like 15,000 words of it written. So I only added 20K. <laughs> that I've actually decided is gonna be Standalone the first series. book in a new series. So that one will get a lot more of my focus once the marionette series is done but when i'm taking breaks from ruthless ends like when it's off with my critique partners or when i'm done with the rough draft and i need to get away from it for a little bit i was so fucking burnt out working on ruthless ends that when it was off and i had a break from it i was just like gasping for air like trying to <laughs> like you were holding your breath underwater for too long and you come up and you're like trying to catch your breath and then before you're ready you gotta dive back in that was the whole fucking writing process of that and i would love to just have a completed rough draft even if it's short and messy it would just be nice to have a full version of this story done would be nice. this book is another contemporary i'm really looking forward to writing i've had so much fun writing what i have of this book and honestly true. i have probably the clearest outline for this book of any of my projects like i know everything that's going to happen in this book i just Nothing. haven't had time to Nothing. write it with all of my other projects what's interesting working on gracie's book now is i'm really grateful that i worked on broken perfect lies first because i learned a lot from writing broken perfect lies that one's a dual pov book all the way through with the love interest which i had never done before and i ended up once i went back to gracie's book realizing it needed to be the same way 
So a lot of things changed when I decided to add in the love interest point of view. I just like got to know him on a much deeper level and then that ended up changing a lot of things that I wanted to happen in the book. So me saying, I have such a great outline, I did. Um, that outline is out the door, we're not writing the book that way anymore. Which is part of the reason I got slowed down on that book, I got stuck. But I think the book's gonna be a lot better for it. Next on my list, kind of going back into health and <laughs> looking after myself, is I want to take more breaks from editing clients during the year. What I tend to do is I take on two clients a month, um, which is definitely cutting back from previous years. But for this past year, I do that every single month. And then it's not until like November or December that I finally take off a couple of weeks or I take off. I always take off the second half of December. And so I just like work continuously all year long and then I'm like okay at the end of the year here's a month off as a treat so that just leads to me feeling like burnt out and stressed and by the end of the year I am so sick of working on editing client work and I don't think I would get that like over it and burnt out of client work if I would just take a couple of smaller breaks I did this ah amazing I actually accomplished one of these goals um I did this several times which like thank god because I needed that extra time and like extra break and peace of mind when I was struggling with ruthless ends I'd have to pull up my editing spreadsheet with my with a list of dates and such but I, I want to say it took off like several months especially in, like in the summertime and some months I didn't even plan on taking off but clients needed to reschedule or cancel or whatever and every single time that happened it ended up being for the best and ended up working out like I really actually needed that month off and I hadn't planned for it so I took on way fewer clients this year than I ever have in the past and it was amazing it was perfect it makes me want to have a similar year next year where I only take on that number of clients because this was much easier to manage as my books have gotten way more successful and I have more money coming from them it's always been my plan to scale back on editing even this year I took on more than I needed to um, so this coming year I'm gonna take on even fewer than I did this year and now because I have so few when they do come up when it is time to work on one I'm like excited about it again I've gotten to the point where I can enjoy it again so uh, yeah I am really happy with the new balance that I found with those I also have um, a trip happening in September that I'm really really looking forward to. I'm gonna skip this. Um, I did end up going on lots of trips this year but what she's about to talk about is the trip to Barcelona that's supposed to happen in September. It was cancelled, it didn't happen, um, it ended up being for the best, it ended up working out because that timing wasn't gonna work for me after all but yeah things changed. Thinking about launching a new tier over on my Patreon page. Right now my page has three tiers and my patreon page is pay what you can so no matter how much you pay per month you get access to everything but right now my patreon is very catered towards people who come from my youtube channel or people who are other authors basically and so i kind of want to add in a different branch to patreon which is more reader centric i did not end up doing this i kind of did the patreon page is a pay what you can system so i did add in a new tier just as like a different price option in between the lowest and the second lowest but I haven't changed the content over there I'm thinking about changing up the patreon whole structure in the new year I haven't figured out exactly how I'm gonna do that just yet this is something that's been on my mind for a while is how like author centric my patreon page is I would love to be able to incorporate my readers more but at the same time I don't know if I have enough room on my plate to have to do any other kind of content the patreon page as it is right now like I've gotten myself into a good system with making that content and being able to deliver it every month without a problem. Adding something else I'm weary of doing and I don't really know what it would be. It would have to be something that felt like feasible to be consistent and for me to put out every single month without adding too much extra stress to my plate. So that's still something like I would ideally like to do but I don't have like concrete plans to move forward with that. 23. I also need to figure out what the hell <laughs> I'm doing with my living situation in 2023. If you haven't been around for long I was originally living near Denver, Colorado. I'm currently in Portland, Oregon because I decided on a whim that I wanted to move here this year which has been fantastic. I've been enjoying it but my lease here is up in April or May so I need to decide am I staying here am I picking another city that I randomly want to move to I don't I don't know at this point so we shall see where the heck we end up in 2023 that's still up in the we're st same spot as that video I'm still living here I did end up renewing my lease for five months after my initial lease went that has come and gone so now I'm on a month by month basis because I don't know I I am kind of feeling the itch to move somewhere else like apartment wise 
not necessarily city wise i don't really really know where i want to be i thought i would know by now um when i moved here it was because i got just like this random like intuition urge to be here everyone since i've moved here has asked me like why portland and i've never been able to give anyone an answer because it was honestly just like a gut feeling i was like i feel drawn there i'm able to because i can do my job wherever i've got no ties here this is something feasible for me so i'm young why the heck not and i thought I would get another one of those feelings to help me decide what to do next and I haven't yet so I don't know if that means to stay here <laughs> um I don't know so I have been looking at houses ideally I would like to buy something instead of continuing to rent I still own my condo back in Colorado I don't want to live there anymore though right now it's a rental property so it's kind of complicated with like mortgages interest rates the market I don't want to keep throwing my money down the drain with rent I don't want to live in that condo anymore. I also don't really want to sell it because that's like the most valuable thing that I have that's gone up in value so much since I bought it in 2019. Am I going to get approved for a loan if I want to buy another house though? We don't, we don't know. The living situation, it's a constant stressor. Um, I'm hoping just like whatever is meant to be will just fall in my lap. But I do really like it here and the idea of leaving makes me sad so I feel like I'm not quite ready to leave. I don't know. I don't know of uh, kind of dipping my toes into translating my book. This was something I was like really sure I was gonna do this year and then I did get in like the first steps of the process of it and ultimately it just it ended up not really aligning with all of my priorities of the year it was just like it was something that was going to take up a lot of my time a lot of my energy a lot of my resources and i decided it wasn't worth it right now part of that being the book i kind of wanted to be my guinea pig for this was broken perfect lies which came out at the beginning of this year and then that release was pretty underwhelming that book is still my lowest seller to date so maybe if that release had taken off more i would have felt more motivated to move forward with that it now i'm looking at it i'm like if i were to translate anything it would make the most sense to do it with my marionette series because those are my po most popular books at this point i get requests all the time from people to have them in different languages but that's such a large commitment to translate not just one but four books i want to do it well if i'm doing it on my own it could be so fucking expensive if i'm not doing it on my own and i'm like signing my rights away and stuff like that's just a completely different landscape that's something i've never experienced before i want to make sure i'm doing it right i want to make sure i'm doing something smart especially with the marionette series that's like i feel so attached to these books like these are my babies like i want to do them justice so it ended up just being something that was going to be so complicated and i didn't have the bandwidth to deal with it this year as i was like killing myself trying to write this last book so in a perfect world i mean i would love to have my books translated but it's a very complicated expensive other world of publishing and right now it just didn't feel like it was the best use of my time and my attention and my energy. In the future, I would love to. We'll see if that's something that comes to fruition in 2023 or not. So in sum with the books, um, we will definitely be having two book releases, Broken Perfect Lies and Ruthless Ends. I feel like there might be a third at some point just because Broken Perfect Lies is done pretty much and I'll be releasing at the beginning of the year and I'll be working on Ruthless Ends throughout the year. But like with my track record of how many projects I tend to work on and how much I tend to get done, like one project isn't going to fill all my time in the year like i'll have time to work on other stuff so if we finish gracie's book perhaps that'll come out i don't really know because that's going to be the first book in a new series too maybe we'll just start working on book two in that series i don't know if i'm going to want to wait until i have a couple of books in that series and do more of a quick release with those i don't really know what the plan is with that series just yet that is true for gracie's book my plan is not to release that right away once i do finally finish it i would rather have book two at least like pretty far along in the process before publishing book one they're going to be interconnected standalones you won't have to read them in order it's not a series like the marionettes but it is something that i would want to release the books in that series pretty quickly i do have good plans for them like i have like the different tropes that I want for each book. I have all the titles picked out. I know what I want the cover for book one to look like, but Broken Perfect Lies, I got the cover made like way far in advance by accident because it took me so long to write that book. And since Gracie's book is taking me so long, I'm like forcing myself to wait to make the cover. I'm not making any plans until I have a finished book one in my hands. Then we'll figure out what the heck we're gonna do. The market changes so quickly. It's just like, with how slowly I'm moving these days, it's really hard to make plans because it might be the perfect plan for right now. But then if I don't publish for two years, 
the market could look so fucking different. I don't know why I'm swearing at you so much today. I'm sorry. It's hard to make plans because things could look very different. When it comes to like health stuff, something I'm working on right now is really balancing my hormones. And I've been working on cycle syncing when it comes to what I'm eating and my workouts. I'm really trying to regulate my system by like going to sleep at the same time and waking up at the same time. I've been doing acupressure every day, which I've been really, really liking. I've been trying to walk more and to lower my cortisol levels, which means I am trying so hard to cut back on the caffeine. This is half decaf. I'm trying to cut out the energy drinks altogether. I've been really good this year with the amount of alcohol I've been drinking. Um, th that was a goal for 2022. Trying to get back into be be being better about strength training. I will say I feel like I was on a really good track with a lot of those things for a while and I kind of fell off then I got back on and they kind of fell off so right now I'm in like a I kind of fell off period I didn't have the energy drinks for a couple of months and I am good about like if I go out and I get a coffee I'll get it like half decaf or something and um, I'm, I'm back on my energy drink kick honestly just kind of lately I've gotten back on it I don't know what caused that it's not great it's not affecting me as badly as it had been at that point when I like needed to cut back but I am getting better about not like going out and getting a coffee that has several shots of espresso in it and then also having an energy drink in the same day. I think that's where things got like pretty bad for me. The alcohol, yeah, <laughs> it's a work in progress. When I was in college, I used to lift weights and I would go to the gym pretty much every single day and I was just very strong and I, I just felt good. I'm not particularly enjoying lifting weights at this point in my life so I'm just kind of experimenting and trying other kinds of workouts. I've really been enjoying Pilates and bar. I've always loved yoga so I've just kind of been experimenting more with like body weight style workouts and just trying to figure out like what I enjoy right now because that's my number one priority when it comes to exercise is being consistent with it but also just enjoying what I do. So I would love to see if I'm able to get to that point where I feel as strong as I did when I used to lift weights with doing what I'm doing now basically. The working out thing is interesting. I have been trying to get more into strength training again and like she was saying it's it's so weird especially with my whole life like documented on here to look back and my earlier life. I used to really favor very high intensity, very hard workouts. I would do like hit, and I would lift really heavy. Like I wanted to feel like I was gonna die in my workouts. Like I had like max, like I was pushing hard all the time and I enjoyed it. It's taken some time to kind of accept that what feels good for my body and what's like healthy for my body at 27 doesn't look the same as it did at 19. So I'm still kind of like, figuring out that. I am getting more into strength training again, not the like heavy lifting that I used to do. I'm like starting to slowly incorporate those more high intensity workouts back in, but like not as hard as I used to do and not as often as I used to do. It's weird getting older and having to like accept that you can't just like do the same things all the time. Like now I really love walking, like <laughs> um, just like walking a ton. Um, it's just, it feels good. and it's low impact when in the past i used to be like doing these crazy sprints on the treadmill in the gym it's just it's so funny to look back at what i used to do and compare it to now but we're finding a good like medium i also really enjoyed meeting up with jesse and sarah earlier this year for that conference so i would love to do another kind of like writing retreat meet up with other authors this light <laughs> I was trying to squeeze it in before the sun went down and even though the sun is technically still up, it's just so dark today. I actually ended up um, meeting more of those goals than I expected. As far as the writing retreat thing, I did end up going on a writing retreat in July up in Seattle and met a ton of new people. That was so fun. I thought I might split this into two videos, but honestly, we'll just squeeze it in here at the end because all of the kind of like final thought wrap up things will be easy to go off of here. So I made just kind of a list of like things that happened in 2023, honestly, to kind of remind myself 2023 overall was honestly the hardest year I've had in a really long time and I don't know how noticeable that was for you online. Um, I kind of tried to keep it to myself as I was struggling with some personal stuff. It was a really really hard year for me. I really struggled this year. So um, I made this list to kind of like remind myself that good things happened this year too but overall honestly what 2023 taught me or just kind of reminded me is that 
success and healing and growth it's not linear because 2023 felt like 2021 2022 i felt like i was like on this amazing trajectory my career was growing like everything was going great 2023 it felt like a dip it felt like i took a step backwards i really struggled this year you may have noticed i posted not very many videos this year and part of it was that like i i didn't want an audience as i was struggling so with that said um <laughs> Some of the good things from this year. I can't even believe some of these things happened this year. Like it just feels so far away. I dyed my hair all of these crazy colors this year, which is something I kind of like always wanted to do, but was kind of like afraid to. Didn't really feel like it misfit my personality. Um, it was hot pink for a while. It was red. I had blue. Not all of it. I like dyed kind of like under here and I did it myself. I fucked up my hair real bad from that. <laughs> But it was something so just like fun for me to do and something so out of my comfort zone. I published Broken Perfect Lies back in February, which is a book that I'm so proud of. It's the book of mine that I wish more people would read. It hasn't had its moment yet. I hope it will, maybe next year. A good friend of mine came to see me in March. Caitlin and I have actually been friends since middle school. I think we met in seventh grade or maybe eighth grade. We were around 13. So we have been friends for 14 years now longer than we were not friends in our lives so shout out to Caitlin she is now a teacher so she came to see me I think it was their um, spring break and I took her to do some of the kind of like touristy things in Portland to her to like Multnomah Falls and things like that and just like having someone use their time off to come see me I appreciated that so much my family came to see me in May took them around to do some fun things took them to some of my favorite places in Portland took them to like the Japanese garden and stuff like that that was really fun I went home in June to see my mom for her birthday and we ended up going paragliding which if you don't know you're like strapped to this like parachute kind of thing and you jump off the top of a mountain and you just like fly around and it was so much fun i've been an adrenaline junkie my entire life but i've kind of lost that a little bit as i've gotten older and doing that like i felt like a teenager again and i was like oh my god like i forgot how much i love doing this stuff i want to start doing stuff like this again that was so much fun if you ever have the opportunity to do it would highly recommend my mom wanted to do it for her birthday because she's afraid of heights like can't even go over a bridge afraid of heights she wanted to like conquer this fear so if my mom can do it any of you can too so it was really fun for me but it was also just really fun to be a part of that for her because i know that was a big deal for her then my friend Paige came to see me in july I got to take her around portland and do some things i'm so thankful that so many people made the trip out here to see me so she and i hung out in portland for a little bit then we ended up driving up to seattle we were trying to see the taylor swift concert didn't end up getting tickets so we ended up standing in the parking lot but we still had a lot of fun and then after she left i was there in seattle for a writing retreat got to do some seattle touristy things got to just like meet a lot of other writers which was really fun this year i had a puzzle created for my book series i love doing jigsaw puzzles and yeah this was like a just for the hell of it kind of thing it ended up being a really expensive investment but I'm really glad that I did it it was just so it was just something that I did for me and it was just really fun I'm really glad to have it now it was a part of a Kickstarter that I ran which ended up being so much more successful than I could have hoped for I raised over $22,000 initially and then um, I'm gonna make a wrap-up video about the Kickstarter once I finally finished fulfilling everything but like all in all this thing ended up raising I want to say like $27,000. So that was a really big part of this year. Then I went to go visit Paige in South Carolina in September, which was fun. I've never been to Columbia before. They have like the nicest airport I have ever been to. We like hung out and stuff and we ended up going to see, the reason why I went to see her was we were going to a concert and I got to see one of my favorite bands of all time in concert, which is the band Camino. And it was so much fun. <laughs> I want to see them again so badly i love concerts and especially like smaller concerts like that i think are so much more fun i used to go so often and i just like don't anymore and that was another thing that being at it, i was like god i wish i did this more often again then in october ruthless ends came out finished the marionettes series which this was like the thing that i had been struggling with all year long writing this book so for it to finally come out was this huge weight off my shoulders, this huge relief, this huge accomplishment. It's been a huge stepping stone in my career having a completed series. The like return on investment has kicked up 
to a whole other degree for me now that this series is complete and just like having something complete in my backlist really does make me feel like I'm in a different stage of my career. It just like opens up so many other options for me. So that was a tough part of this year, but I'm really, really glad that I pushed through and I got the book out. Then I took another trip. Like I said, I was just like going back and forth a lot in November to spend my birthday with my family, which was super fun. I felt bad. I hadn't been home since June at that point. So it had been about six months. So I was really glad I got back to see everybody. I finally got myself a Christmas tree this year. I lived on my own for like over five years. I've never gotten a Christmas tree. Finally got one this year. My family is taking a trip to see me in December. They will be here in a couple of days actually. We will be driving up to Seattle. We're gonna go to a Kraken game. We'll spend New Year's Eve together. It should be really fun. I'm gonna take them around to do some stuff in Seattle and a few more like career things a book box made special editions of the marionettes books the first two are in their quarterly box you might still be able to get it right now depending on when you're watching this video it'll be in their winter subscription box they're going to complete the series so you can get all four as well which was just like really really cool to have that opportunity and to get like new covers and new character art made they've got patterned end papers and sprayed edges and just like all of these really fancy things and i didn't have to pay for it <laughs> as an indie author um getting to see your new your book in like this new format like that and not having to fit the bill real cool and it was something that they reached out to me i didn't have to seek out this opportunity which was so cool because i've been in book boxes before but it was always something that like i initiated and it was also just like a regular book it wasn't like it was a special edition of the book so this was just something brand new for me something really exciting i had over 20,000 copies of a single book sold this year which has never happened to me that just felt like a really big milestone for me so that was really exciting i got invited to attend the romanticy book con in florida next year which again is just a really exciting opportunity i've never done an in-person event so i'll be there i'll be signing there's like a masquerade ball and stuff i'll be attending so I'm really looking forward to that event. I was really flattered that they asked me to come. I'm hoping to meet some readers. Yeah, I've never done anything in person before, so um, the social anxiety part of me is quite nervous, but I think it'll be really, really fun. After the um, unfortunate incident of, in July of having to stay in the parking lot for Taylor Swift, I did score some Taylor Swift tickets. I'll be seeing her in New Orleans next year. I'm so excited. I was so disappointed not to go this year, so I'm very, very excited to have gotten tickets. And all in all, I just made a lot of new friends this year. Yeah, it was it was exciting. I've made friends um, who are other authors. I've made friends who are not. I've made some vegan friends, which is really cool for me because um, before that, honestly, I was the only vegan that I knew. So being able to connect with people about that is really cool. Being able to connect with other authors who also self-publish, like unless you are in this space and you're doing this thing, very few people can understand what your job is like. So to be able to connect with other people who get it is amazing. And then any other takeaways I took notes on, as I was saying, this was a really, really tough year for me. If that happens to be the case for you too, even in the hard years, there's probably a lot more good things that happened than you remember. Writing it down, taking pictures and stuff throughout the year to be able to look back on and remind yourself of, is so so helpful if you haven't made a list like this for yourself i would highly recommend it because just going off of this list it makes it sound like i had an amazing year um and a lot of these things i just kind of took for granted or i forgot about if you're focusing on the negative it's going to feel like the whole year was negative try to force yourself to focus on the positive for a little bit yeah we kind of briefly touched on this i feel like i've been going through a lot of change not just this year in previous years but specifically it like hit me the hardest this year and going through that while having your entire life online not just in this present moment but i have my whole life on this channel since i was 19. it's tough it's tough to be able to look back on old videos of yourself and to see yourself at like that moment in time and to see how different you are and to kind of wonder if the changes that you've gone through in this new version of yourself is it's a good or a bad thing so that's been something i've been kind of like struggling with it's a blessing and a curse to have so much of my life documented for the first time in my life i don't really know what's next for me i don't really have any concrete plans i don't have any lists i don't have any to-dos which feels probably very contrary to the personality that a lot of you have gotten accustomed to on this channel but yeah right now i just i feel like i just need to be kind of going with the flow and i'm not making plans writing and grinding and like working so hard felt very aligned for me in the past couple of years i've been like working my ass off since I graduated college like never taking a break working so many jobs until I was able to work for myself and then I was working for myself and I felt like I had something to prove and then I got some momentum and I didn't want to lose that so I felt like I had to keep pushing to be able to keep that growth going and I was happy to do it the writing and the grinding and the pushing myself to my absolute limit I was happy to do it I was working an insane number of hours and I was smiling like I loved it because I just felt this like 
sureness, this certainty that that was aligned for me. It felt aligned for me. It felt like that was the path that I was supposed to be on for those years. And things just feel different now. That no longer feels aligned right now. So what does that mean for me, for my channel? I actually don't really know. <laughs> Um, I don't really know where this new path is going to take me and we're just kind of along for the ride and we're gonna see. It's been a quieter year for me because I've spent a lot of this year working on myself and doing this like internal work which doesn't really translate well to vlogging and sharing my life because most of what I'm doing is in my head. Trying to work past old limiting beliefs and digging out that old trauma I never wanted to deal with before and trying to heal from it. So all in all, I'm honestly so, so grateful that the seeds that I've planted in previous years from those like right and grind years have been enough to sustain me through this year and last year honestly while I was going through all of this because those seeds that I planted in the past have been able to like financially support me through this time of my life when the amount of work that I feel like capable of doing is so much less than I did before. And that makes making content kind of hard because I feel like I built this channel off of people enjoying watching me be productive and people getting inspired from seeing me work so much and like that motivated them to do more. And now I'm like, I don't, I don't wanna push myself like that anymore. And <laughs> I feel like that's why people came to my channel was to see that kind of productivity. And these days, it's not that I'm not productive, it's just like I'm channeling my energy in very, very different places. I do miss how productive I was to a certain degree. Um, I do feel like that's where I thrive. That's when I feel the most myself, when I'm like working really hard and I'm being really productive and creative and I'm, yeah, just like getting things done. I like to be busy. So that part of me is still in here, I can, t I can tell. I do wanna get back to that to a certain degree, but I think I'm in a place where I can do that in a healthier way now. I just have some like other outside pieces of my life that I'm fixing up first, you know? Does any of this make sense to anyone but me? So year in review, 2023, we met some goals, we hit some roadblocks. I worked on myself a lot this year and sometimes that's not an easy thing to do. To be honest, it's exhausting, but I think it was much needed. This year has been a tough one and I feel like I'm still like trying to like rest and recuperate from that and doing that resting and like healing and doing all that kind of work is more important to me right now than all of the things that used to be my priorities the work and all of that kind of stuff that used to be top I have said in like every goals video in the past couple of years like career is my number one focus it always has been I've always neglected other parts of my life because of that and I've gone from like I really want to work on that I really want to change that to like overnight that's, that's not the case anymore, which is weird because I felt like that was kind of a fundamental part of my personality and now it's just like, of course I still wanna work, of course I still wanna write, but it's not my top priority right now and I'm not gonna force it to be. It'll come back when it's ready. <laughs> It'll come back when it's time. I haven't picked a word for 2024. I haven't written out any goals. I don't know if I'm going to, I kind of want to just because I like being able to look back on it, but with so much up in the air right now and with me like not really wanting to plan things right now, I honestly don't know. I can think of a few, like I want to figure out this living situation. I ended up staying here this year when I thought I would move 2024, I really do think I'll be in a different place by this time next year. But we'll see, um, this video has got to be like so fucking long. Thanks for hanging out if you're still here, if you're still listening to me ramble, if you're still watching my channel, even though it's been, I feel kind of underwhelming this year. I appreciate you. If you read any of my books this year, if you supported me in honestly any way, thank you so, so much. I am so appreciative for this community and for some reason, some of you guys have stuck with me through like so many different years. And if you have done that, I feel like you must be here for me, not for the content necessarily because the content has changed so much. So if that's the case, I'm running out of space on the card because we've been talking for so long. Thank you so much for being here. I love you guys. I appreciate you so much. We have no light left to speak of. If you have some like notable things that happened for you in 2023, I would be super curious to hear about them down below. Maybe something you're proud of, something you accomplished, something that just made you happy this year. If you have a word that you're assigning for 2024, like your focus for next year, I'd be curious to hear that too. I hope you guys are all doing well. If you want to check out Anna Luisa's jewelry, make sure to check the link down below. Use my code, save some money. And finally, finally, we're going to close off this very long video. I'll see you guys in the next one very, very soon. Bye. No.